So, hello and welcome to the next episode of the Self-Development with Tactics podcast. And I'm pretty much pumped for this episode. And this episode will be amazing. I hope. No, I know it. I know it. I quite know it. And as you can see in the background, we are still... Um, it is just, you know, a really, really miracle that I remembered what... Or I found that we were um, talking about another book just yesterday in the end. You know, um, as I was in train and as I was in school, I was like, yeah, I know that there was a book I was speaking about, I, but I do not know all the time which books they actually are. And, you know, sometimes I you know, really end up talking about the same or actually reading privately, um, you know, the same books as I was talking about. But um, fortunately enough, I had the tab opened. So I do know which book we were talking about yesterday. Let's actually see. Um, just have to, to make the microphone so that, um, you know, not too much noise gets caught up from my PC and as much voice gets caught up by the microphone. Um, the thing is, I do not exactly know um, where I've stopped, but um, uh, yeah, let, let's just begin with um, managed fund and the short-term gains. The authors can see that some funds are better positioned to provide oddized returns in the short term in certain niches in certain market conditions. During the dot-com bubble, for example, many funds managed to beat the market and provide huge returns. But while the overall market survived and recovered the bust, many of those funds collapsed. So again, long-term managed funds perform poorly. So long-term managed funds, I don't know what managed funds are, I'm sorry. Um, but maybe actually some of you might know and some of you need this kind of information. Investment advisors, no thanks. Investment advisors do far worse than the market wants you weigh in their fees, uh, which is, you know, actually true. I do understand that they have the skills you actually do not have or maybe you do not have or, you know, especially I do not have. But um, they, you know, if I was an... Um, you know, invest, investment advisor, I would definitely charge fees. But the thing is, um, you know, if you just can't learn a lot from them, and if you can learn a lot from them, even though you just, you know, charge them a lot of fees, which is, you know, at the end, not pretty good for your money, but um, at the end, it might be good for your brain if you just, you know, really, really get, you know, skills from them and knowledge. You know, um, money isn't the only thing in life. Um, this is actually something, you know, I was just um, showering and then I went into my room and I was so happy. I was so happy. I don't know um, if it was because of the music or because I, you know, did everything I wanted to do today. Um, everything but, you know, recording, which I'm doing now and posting my Instagram and all other social media posts. Haven't done that yet, but I will do it um, quite after I've recorded this episode um, but I was so happy and then I was like yeah you know fuck all the shit really fuck all the fucking shit the most thing that's important and the, the, the thing that's you know the most important is that you're happy and then I was thinking about can I say that you know you should always be doing what makes you happy and what you're passionate about you know, in, in some kind of really crazy ways, no. Um, because if you're just really into eating chocolate and, you know, eating too much chocolate is something that's scientifically proven and, and that I really believe in isn't good for your body and for you. Um, even though, you know, there might be some contradictions going on because actually your mind and body are so deeply connected that maybe if you do still eat chocolate, your brain is such such a big impact on your body that, um, you know, your body is like, yeah, okay, you ate chocolate, I don't give a fuck, you are happy, and therefore I'm healthy. Um, this might also be true, because I really deeply believe in the connection between the mind and body, um, because I've experienced it in some kind of way. So um, every time I'm ill, and I'm hopeful, 
fully uh, I'm not going to be ill in the next few months. Um, I always tend to be a little bit, I do not want to say depressed, but um, you know, I tend not to be as happy as I am used to be. But um, the thing is that, um, you know, if you're ill, most of the time it is something um, with your body, so your body doesn't feel that right. And because my body isn't feeling that right, um, you know, my mind isn't feeling that right as well. The thing is, yeah, I do like making sports and this might be also some kind of factor of this equation. Um, you know, that because I'm not able to work out or to uh, do a lot of sports or even go to school, which is also something that makes me happy because of the people there, um, that I get, you know, mentally not that good in these periods of time because of these things, because of these factors. But um, nevertheless, in general, please, please, you know, drive for happiness and really catch that happiness and do not, you know, go for money or some shit like this. At the end, if you're not happy, everything is, you know, fucked up. Index funds. Um, the little book of common sense investing builds up towards one simple truth. You should invest in index funds yourself. And how do you do that? Uh, picking the best index funds. The first thing is, first eliminate all the high cost funds. Uh, second one is, pick funds with the wi widest, widest, widest coverage, uh, which means funds covering big markets. Uh, don't look too much based on past results. There are no, uh, they are not an indicator of future results and in the long run, the performance average out. Um, play money. The author advises you uh, to keep the lion's share of your portfolio on broad index funds, tracking the biggest indexes. But keep a small portion with uh, which you can play around and speculate a bit. Your portfolio will be safe and you also get to enjoy some playtime. Uh, the real life application of the author, I guess, or I assume, the idea of leaving one uh, or only, sorry, a small portion of your portfolio as a play money is simply genius. You can use this small portion of the portfolio to let your irrational instincts take over and realize that no, that no, you likely won't beat the market through speculation. I wish I had stumbled upon this idea years ago. And at the end, there is a review, uh, the little book of common sense investing, a perfect introduction to investment. And most of all, it lays out how normal people can, can, can get great results or better uh, match market results without wasting money on advisors or wasting time following financial news. Um, in terms of financial news or in general in terms of news, it's just something I've you know, kind of discovered even though it seems a little bit dumb. Um, yesterday or some sort of today or you know, maybe the last month. Yeah, I, I will say the last month because, you know, I'm pretty secure at this. Um, the thing is, news are so fucking important in terms of the stock market. Why? Because, you know, if, you're, if a company is doing great, um, their stocks, you know, might go up. If a company is doing miserable and just fuck up all things they can, their stocks will go down. And um, this is something you have to look at uh, as an investor. Because, you know, if they go down, you actually um, might buy some of them if you know that they will go up again. And if the company just, you know, doesn't get bankrupt or some shit like that, but, you know, really repairs itself or recovers itself um, into a much higher state, which, you know, just then uh, lets the stock market push up like a rocket, at my point of view, or as I assume. And I really have to say now that I do not have any fucking clue about what I've been reading now or just yesterday because I do not actually have a clue about um, um, actual, how should I say, actual investing. I do not know this shit. But, um, you know, I assume and I think and I, you know, know, know is the best word here. <laughs> I know that it is important to, to know something about it because, you know, investing is a good thing um, often and 
tomorrow we'll come a post about this on Instagram and on Twitter and on Facebook. I do not actually know if you should save money to invest it or just to save it. The thing is, saving money clearly is a good idea in general. But the thing is, I do not know if, you know, then you should be investing all your money you have saved up or you should actually, you know, sit on your cash and try and wait until the uh, economy collapses and you can buy every fucking single company for a dollar. Um, as Gary Vee is all the time talking about, which I find pretty funny. Um, you know, just the, the thought of, um, or the visualization of, um, visualization of, sorry, um, you know, you buying an incredible expensive uh, company today in some years for a dollar. Um, but, um, but yeah, investing is something you should learn. I've been, you know, a little bit reading about it today um, uh, when I had time. And actually I was reading, um, I was reading an article on the uh, TonyRobbins.com website. So the actual, I'm sorry, the actual um, site of Tony Robbins himself. And, you know, as you might know, he is a great investor and, uh, you know, he invested in a lot of things, which is good if you have the money. But, um, you know, there were just some great results or some great insights in investing. And, you know, I would really um, invite you to go through this article, I, you know, just type in investing Tony Robbins. And then I think actually the, the first link should be it. Maybe I'll, you know, link it down in the description. Uh, also in the podcast description, if I do not forget it. Um, you know, I can't promise it. I'm sorry, it depends on the time, um, how long it will take to upload the video and do everything today. Yeah. Um, and actually, is it this? No, no, no. We are going to stick with the powermove.com website and we're actually going to talk about, or, you know, I'll go through Difficult, difficult Conversations, which is a book on conversations and, you know, how people interact with each other. And <clears throat> because I liked How to Win Friends and Influence People from Dale Carnegie so, so incredibly, you know, I just thought like, yeah, even though the, the last episode I was just talking about, yeah, I really do want to, uh, you know, read something about a business book and investing book right now because I was before just, you know, talking about something with or off mindset and all these things. But, um, you know, as I've seen today, because of, you know, all these social media things I do, really understanding people is an important step to becoming successful and maybe understanding yourself and understanding, you know, the publicity or society. Um, and actually, as it was at my point of view, I do not remember if it was in How to Win Friends and Influence People or another book. Um, anyways, somewhere there um, was mentioned that most of the people really do want to know how to, um, you know, interact with people the right way, how to deal with people the, the right way, why people are, you know, have these behaviors in these situations. These are actually the, the most asked questions and something most of the people um, by an survey or something, uh, what they really want to learn. But, um, but yeah, difficult, difficult conversations, summary and review in yeah, PDF. But it's from uh, Douglas Stone, Bruce Patton and Shaila or Sheila. Yin, it's H E E N or Heen, whatever. And it's from 2010. Difficult Conversations is a masterpiece of verbal communication. Full title is Difficult Ma Conversations How to Discuss What Matters the Most or What Matters Most. I couldn't do justice to the book without fully drawing on its many dialogue examples, and since it wouldn't be fair or legal for that matter, copying so much text, I warmly invite you to read the book. The bullet summary. Acquisitions are masked feelings, express the feelings directly instead. And even though I really do want to go through this book, there is a lot of um, a lot of translating there. Accusation. What is accusation? 
Ah, accusations are masked feelings. Express the feelings directly instead, uh, which makes sense. Yeah, which makes sense. Uh, starting a performance review. Starting is the tone nice? Yeah, yeah, should be fine. Um, starting a performance review by asking people how they are feeling or how they think they have done is awkward and yeah you know I some sort of think you know this won't get you you know pretty pretty um, pretty anywhere because most of, most of the people just really do not know how they um, even how they feel actually at my point of view people just um, you know really rare people really understand themselves this is you know some kind of the truth and this is also the same with me i do not certain i do not know or understand certain things about me as well and you know i hope that i that i'll um, know them you know some somehow or somewhere in my entire lifetime if you think it or so if you think it or feel it, you are entitled to say it. Speak for yourself and you can speak with power. You can't move the conversation on a positive direction until the other feels heard and understood. Which means that you should listen. For fuck's sake, man. You know, a lot of people do not listen. And the thing is, this is actually something I've been trying so fucking hard in the last few days. You know, uh, you do want to know why, I I suppose, or I assume, um, I really want to, you know, understand my consumers or the consumers of social media in general, because it is important for me. And, you know, I can't really, you know, create my products or my posts in the right way if I do not know how these people behave. And if I know this... And if I especially know how my target audience, you know, really, uh, how should I say, uh, yeah, behave, um, then I can really market the shit out of my fucking posts. Because I then really know how or what they need, um, how this should look like, what they, um, you know, how, if, if videos are doing better, if photos are, are doing better, if a lot of text less text you know it could be through trying out but you know listening and seeing on other posts is especially in the self-development area a little bit difficult because most of the time people just put up a lot of shit and most of the comments are as, as uh, most of the comments on these posts are completely shit they're most of the time just you know all the same people commenting on each other's posts so that you know they you know, get themselves up in the rank, or I don't know, but, but yeah, let's go into the full summary. The difficult conversations are all those conversations we would ra rather avoid, such as complaining to a neighbor about their barking dog, or asking for a salary increase at work. The author says, or say, the author say, yeah, that underlying difficult conversations are three deeper conversations, which are, what happened, usually involving the facts, what should happen and where the blame lies, feelings, the feelings and emotions involved that most people try to cut out, and identity, some conversations can go to our personal core, are we a good person or are we, uh, or are we competent even. What happened? The authors say that the common mistake is to stop at what has happened at a so superficial level. What we should do instead is to understand what interpretations of those events are and what is important to each party. Which means that you should really try to understand the people that, you know, really are involved in this conversation. Yeah, conversation actually. Not that I shouldn't really quote it or, uh, you know, put it into quotation marks, but actually um, in conversations. And, you know, this is actually the thing uh, which reminds me again on something. And this is, you know, I just talk about it over and over and over again. But at my point of view, it is pretty important. You should always be talking, you know, in the mind or in the um, preferences or in the uh, benefits of the other person. Which means that, 
If you're on a job interview, you should be talking about how you could contribute this or their fucking business. And you should not be talking about all the time, you know, what you want or that you want this job because you want to, I don't know, get more money or whatever. Speak in terms of the other person's, uh, not really opinions, but so what, what they just need. What do they need? They maybe need a hard worker. They maybe need someone, you know, who takes care of the business and something like this. Yeah. Uh, for a good resolution, the parties involved should move from their own views of the fact to a curiosity about the other person's view of the events. And don't assume they meant it. The second common mistake is that people often assume to know what the other person's or party's intentions are, but they are often wrong because we base those assumptions on our own feelings. That's actually true because, um, yeah, because we can't even know how these other persons are feeling right now. We can just, you know, look at them and assume. And um, then we might be like, oh, yeah. He's looking some kind of angry. He's looking like me sometimes. And when I look like this, I am actually angry. And then you might be like, yeah, this person is actually angry because you are angry if you like, if you look like this. But, um, you know, we are all, all individuals. And this is why it fucks me so hard that a lot of people just generalize just everything. You know, we are all individuals. We have all our own shits to cope with. We have all, all our own dreams, so yeah, you know, yeah, but I, I do not want to say that and there are not just, you know, really groups of people who have the same thoughts or, I don't know, goals, values, but at the end we are actually all individuals. Um, yeah, um, so if we are hurt, then we tend to believe the other party intention was to hurt us, and that's often just not the case. Also, there is a certain tendency of going with the worst possible op option, which certainly doesn't help in conflict resolution. Even though it is quite, you know, uh, a, a good thing, some kind of, if you just, you know, look at the worst possible option. Uh, because most of the time you just see that the worst possible option isn't that worse at all. It is actually, you know, quite, you know, you're quite capable of handling it. And, you know, often it is... As I'm just, you know, thinking about it, breaking it, everything down so that I can talk about the every fucking thing that's standing here in the text. Um, if you just know um, your problem or your worst possible option, you can even break it down and break it down into, you know, how this could happen and not do shit that could happen or lead to this. This is, you know, just what I'm thinking about. Even though it doesn't make maybe not that sense. Uh, but yeah, also there is a certain tendency of going with the worst possible option, which certainly doesn't help in conflict resolution. The simple solution is to ask the other party what was their intent. Yeah, just ask. And this is actually something I have been talking about in the last episode, that, or maybe in, in the episode before, I don't really remember. You know, it's it's not that important, but I've said it. Um we should all be asking more. You know, if it wasn't, you know, that hard to ask how, um, you know, my target audience consumes things or what they really need, um, I would just really ask them. But the thing is, how should I ask them? If I just, you know, put a question in my posts, no one would fucking remember, not remember, but reply. Um, that's why I'm, I'm just pretty on Quora, you know, this um, this uh, platform where you can just, you know, ask questions and someone answers them. And I'm really into answering the self-development questions or self-improvement questions. There are quite a lot. And, you know, through these, I, I really hope to find what, you know, um, what would get asked the most frequent or the most frequently, however, or you know which just appear most of the time you know in in you know in the general time span of the whole feed and um yeah and and feed this through this i really hope because as i was saying before the self development 
opposed to others do not really give you real insights into actual people because often they just, you know, put out motivational stuff themselves, which is good, yeah. Sorry. Um, but um, actually questions or some really thoughts or some things like this do not occur often, which is, which is a little bit a pity for me. But, um, yeah, just, just ask. Avoid blame talk contributions. Blaming others doesn't make anything better. That, you know, everyone hates to be blamed. And therefore, a lot of people just, you know, blame others. Which doesn't make any sense. But, but yeah, never mind. Uh, and the third mistake is to assign blame. Which can quickly escalate the situation and take us further from any resolution. The authors say we should instead focus on finding out how we all contribute to the situation. Telling first our own contributes can help the other party move away from the natural tendency of blaming. So, uh, so the contribution, uh, how we all contribute to the situation. Sorry. Contribute to the situation. <sighs> you know what? I actually understand and know all these words, but maybe I'm even too tired. You know, I went to bed yesterday um, so late that I only got six hours of sleep and today it doesn't really look like uh, something else. The thing is, uh, I only come home at, well, what is it? It's, it's 7 o'clock uh, or 7 p.m., Maybe it'll be a little bit later. And today was a day where I had to work out. And fortunately enough, I, you know, reached the first uh, train uh, home. Or, you know, the fastest train home. Because most of the time I just really do not get it. And, you know, really miss it. But today I really got it. Really, really. and Which was quite great. But the thing is, I just, you know, then work out for 40 minutes at least. And then I just have to eat and then I have to, to you know, shower. And then I can actually um, record the video, which is pretty late. And the thing is, afterwards I have to make the videos for tomorrow's posts. And this takes up a lot of time as well, but, but it's okay. The, the process is great. And this is actually something I've really been feeling today, that the actual process of trying to really get something out of this whole social media thing I'm I'm doing is is pretty great yeah and I I really understand why people just like the process and like the the way up to their success but yeah um, so telling first our own contributions can help this is actually something that's uh, standing in how to win friends and influence people um, and then he was saying, if you just tell somebody, or if you have to tell somebody their mistakes, what they made, the best thing is to just, you know, tell them your mistakes or how, or how and what mistakes you always make or frequent, frequently make um, before telling them what mistakes they made. Because, you know, it just lets them feel better and not like, yeah, you're superior and you're the best and you just fuck them because, because you are the leader or the boss or whatever. You know, it just, you're on, you know, the, the same, 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 same ground, maybe? Same level. Same level is a good one. <laughs> same level is a good one. Yeah. So here are four common contributes people uh, contribution sorry people oft 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 yeah okay oft uh, avoiding until now we often contribute to a problem by avoiding for so long allowing it to grow which is at my point uh, at my point of view the reason why uh, you know a lot of relationships do not go that well because um if you do not speak about the problems or something that really bothers you um, really quickly or just, you know, right now, everything will just, uh, uh, everything will just rub on each other until it really explodes, until the whole situation explodes and there will be then a pre-escalated situation. 
So um, at my point of view, you should always be talking about something that bothers you right now. And my voice is getting so high. And I don't know why. Being unapproachable, behaving in a way that makes it hard to talk to, moving quickly, avoiding contact, being generally unfriendly. Which is a problem, yeah. Because, you know, if the person, the other person is, you know, acting like this, you can't really and you do not even have the possibility to to clear this situation, to make the situation better because they just, you know, avoid you some, some sort of, but, um, and, or, you know, you can't do anything. Yeah, you can talk to yourself and, you know, start to make everything good uh, in terms of yourself. But, uh, but yeah. Is this a good one? No. I hope, by the way, that the audio is so quite good. But I guess. I guess. Uh, with, the, with the smartphone, it's always quite good. Uh, fortunately enough, yeah. Yeah, actually, I do not need a microphone. This is the, the real thing. Because I think with a real, real microphone, it wouldn't be that much better. You know, I'm very happy with this quality. Especially when I'm not really sitting in my PC so that the, all these noises get caught up by this one. But yeah, it, it sounds great. Intersections. We are all different form opinions based on part experiences and references. But there are no right or wrong, just intersections. What is an intersection? Ah. Uh, yeah, that's true. Role assumptions. We often assign ourselves positive roles in the issue which is comfortable for us but not useful. Yeah. To expand your views on the contribution, try to look at yourself from the other party's shoes and then look at the whole situation from a third party perspective. And it is always great to just, you know, put yourself into somebody's some other party's some some somebody others somebody's Actually, somebody's what the fuck? So somebody's shoes to you know to to see what or how they are seeing the perspective, as they were just telling. But but yeah, it's it's a good one. Feelings expressing emotions openly is difficult for many of us. We tend indeed to avoid being too open about how we feel. This is dangerous. The author said. The authors say, because unexpected unexpressed feelings tend to fester find their way back into the conversation in nasty ways and prevent us from listening properly. The solution for all the parties to share their feelings openly and so the solution for all the parties are actually to share their feelings openly and clearly. Don't mistake them for facts and this is important but don't pretend that feelings are not there. Both their feelings and your feelings yeah, do not do not always talk about yourself, please. Please. <laughs> uh, identity. Some conversations are very tough because they inherently touch our own sense of worth. A job review, uh, for example, or talking about how to fix a big mistake. The most difficult conversations can threaten our ego and sense of identity by calling into questions or competency or even whether we are worthy of being loved and appreciated. For more details on the importance of feeling worthy or love, read uh, Breen Brown Daring Gently. The authors say it's a human tendency of thinking in terms of all or nothing that can make the identity level of the conversation so touchy. We tend to think we are either great and everyone loves us or we are terrible and unworthy. The solution is in adopting the end stance and ditching the all or nothing paradigm. You know, it's it's not all and all or nothing. Yeah, I you know, you you can work some sort, you can work the half of the day, yeah. Which is not 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 working, which is not you know working the full day, but it's the half day. Um, you know there there's always something in between, always, and there are always options. 
The authors say that there is a relation between how easily we can admit our own mistakes and our own mixed intentions and how balanced and strong we feel during the conversation and the chances that it will go well will immediately rise. This is actually true and um, you know really understanding that you made a mistake and understanding that maybe you aren't that great at this certain task. This is actually something that makes you confident in these conversations. Um, I, I really have to, to tell you a story now. Um, I had once a, a presentation in school and um, you know my writing is pretty shit in German. You know there are quite a lot of rules you have to know and or you have to just you know uh, yeah just follow but the thing is I know the rules some sort of I am not gonna be like yeah I know all of them I do not know all of them but I know you know quite a lot of them but I I you know most of the time I just like yeah I, I fuck them you know I just I write and then I'm like yeah fuck it I, I don't give a fuck right now I just want to write and this you know created a real problem for me because of this some sort of habit or mindset of you know just giving a fuck in terms of writing um, I make quite a lot of mistakes and you know in this presentation it was actually for uh, uh, it was a design presentation of uh, it was a pre presentation of a presentation if I yeah it was a presentation of a presentation no it wasn't it was a presentation of you know just something some researches on colors and how colors can really be um really be affecting humans in terms of you know what they really stand for so what the colors really stand for and the thing is i made you know quite an aesthetic presentation but the presentation wasn't very presentation like so it was you know kind of the text was kind of uh, you know crazy aligned and everything it was a little bit you know artistic and the thing is my teacher just straight up told me do you have problems with your writing? Um, but actually, I just have to... Or did he say it? So, you know, at the end, he just asked myself or asked me in a not really that friendly way, to be honest, if I wasn't that good at writing. And, you know, I straightforward taught him, yeah, I, I suck at it. You know, not really like this, but... I actually suck at it and I know that I suck at it and really admit it and uh, you know which is just really what they were talking about here so that if you uh, if I see it now can I see it now please <laughs> um, so if you admit your own mistakes yeah I made a lot of mistakes and yeah I'm I struggle with my writing and after I said that the whole conversation was so not not friendly but it was so so great for me because i i wasn't pissed by what they were saying and i wasn't really attacked personally by what they were saying because i was i had just admitted that yeah i suck at it but um there's an author an author note which is the identity side will always hit harder those people who have a fixed mindset and this is something i was talking about the last two times and um, because of the time and because I promised my girlfriend to uh, call her at 2045 and it's 2043 now it is time to say goodbye for me and this episode went really great and I'm so so glad for this to to happen because the words flowed everything was okay the text was good in terms of the value for you, I, I hope there was there was something for you. Especially, you know, the last part was quite a great for me, actually, as well. But um, if there are any questions, just write it down in the comments or hit me up on every social media uh, platform you would like to. There should all be somewhere in the description box or, yeah, description box. And, but yeah, I'll actually see you the next time. And I hope you have a wonderful and happy and wealthy and successful day and life. See you the next time.